We now move to First Minister's questions. Question number one, Joanne Lamont. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and welcoming the Deputy First Minister to her position. May I ask her what engagement she has planned for the rest of the day? Deputy First Minister. Can I thank Joanne Lamont for her welcome and advise her that I have engagements today to take forward the Government's programme for Scotland. Joanne Lamont. Thank you. Presiding Officer, the Deputy First Minister and I know Govan Shipyard well, and I'm sure she shares with me the bittersweet feeling about yesterday's announcement by the UK Defence Secretary. Great sadness for the 840 families who will lose their jobs, and of course for their colleagues in Portsmouth, but a degree of relief that shipbuilding on the Clyde does have a future. Can the Deputy First Minister tell us what steps the Scottish Government is taking to secure the future of our shipyards? Deputy First Minister. Can I uh, firstly join with Joanne Lamont in expressing deep regret at yesterday's announcement? She's absolutely correct. There had been mounting speculation that Govan Shipyard was under threat of closure, and there is an element of relief that that did not turn out to be the case. But 800 job losses across uh, the Clyde and Drysyth is clearly a devastating blow for the shipbuilding industry and uh, for the communities affected, as she uh, rightly says we both know uh, the shipyard and those who work uh, within it very well indeed and I want to put on record today the fact that the Scottish Government's thoughts are with all those in Govan, Scotston and Rosyth who are affected by this announcement. Uh, the Finance Secretary yesterday had uh, discussions with BAE and with the unions. I understand he briefed Joanne Lamont this morning on the content of his discussions with the company. Uh, the Finance Secretary and I will be meeting uh, face to face tomorrow morning with BAE and indeed with with the unions uh, represented. Uh, we will do everything as the Scottish Government working uh, with the company, with the unions and indeed with the UK Government to uh, protect as many jobs as possible and also to give as much support as we possibly can to those uh, affected. I think uh, people across the Chamber would expect no less of us. In terms of the longer term uh, future of the shipyard, I'm sure we'll get into this discussion in greater depth as uh, question time develops today. Uh, I do believe that the Scottish shipbuilding industry uh, does have, should have and must have a strong and secure future. Naval procurement is part of that future. But I believe if we want to build the security and the sustainability of our shipbuilding industry, we must also think beyond naval procurement. Uh, I look at Norway, uh, a country similar in size to Scotland with 42 shipyards that built 100 ships last year. So I'm not saying it will be easy, but with the political will and with consensus I hope we can gather across this chamber, all of us should be determined to build that future for our shipyards and for all of those who work within them. Joanne Lamont. We know that work will continue in the Clyde on aircraft carriers. We also know that 2,500 jobs will be sustained as a result of the order for three new ocean patrol vessels. Beyond that, it is vital that Clyde shipyards secure the work to build the Type 26 frigates. We know what the Deputy First Minister thinks will happen and hopes will happen. We know what she would like to happen. But can she tell us what discussions the Scottish Government has had with BAE and the UK Government about securing this work? And can she give my constituents and hers a guarantee that this work will come to the Clyde? Deputy First Minister. First Minister. I just said earlier on that John Swinney and I will be meeting with the company tomorrow. I, as I know Joanne Lamont does, care deeply about the shipbuilding industry and the future of it. I will work with anybody, anywhere, to secure the future of an industry that I think is very important to Scotland, practically and indeed emotionally. And can I also say that my heart goes out to the people of Portsmouth, because I know that their yeah. shipbuilding industry yeah. is as important to them as the Clydes is to us. The problem we have is that naval procurement alone, however important, is not enough, as we saw yesterday with the further downsizing of our shipbuilding industry, yeah. is not enough to secure that future beyond, not just for 10 years, but 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and that's what I want to do. Now, this uh, issue about whether or not the Type 26 frigates would be built on the Clyde in an independent Scotland. Let me deal with that directly, and I'd say two things. Firstly, what we heard yesterday from BAE and from the Secretary of State for Defence is that the Clyde is the best place to build those ships. End of story. Secondly, the UK Government would have nowhere else to build these ships. Right. But, you know, I found, I found something quite interesting uh, this morning. It's, it's a press release on the Royal Navy website, and it's headed Britain and Australia to work together to create frigates of the future. Ah. 
It starts by saying this, among the closer cooperation between the two countries' military, we'll be seeing whether we can work jointly on the Royal Navy's Type 26 global combat ship. On a visit, Philip Hammond, on a visit to BAE Systems Shipyard in Perth, Australia, said this, and I'm quoting directly. He said, areas of potential cooperation include future frigates, frigates with the Royal Navy's Type 26 design, the first of many opportunities for future collaboration. In times of budget pressures for all nations, it makes sense to maximise economies of scale and work with our friends to get the best value for money on all sides. So I would ask Joanne Lamont to explain to me in all seriousness, in very simple terms, why it should be OK for the UK government to collaborate with a country at 10,000 miles away, but collaboration between two countries that share the same island would not be the case. Joanne Lamont, as the constituency MSP for Govan Shipyard, should be getting behind the shipyard to say it's the best place to build the Type 26 frigates, regardless of the outcome of next year's vote. Joanne Lamont. Ms Lamont, order, Ms Lamont. The fact of the matter is, we currently have joint procurement. It's called the United yeah. Kingdom. <laughs> what, what the Deputy First Minister wants to do is to break that up and then reinvent it and pretend there's not a difficulty. Yes, Govan is the best in the United Kingdom. I want Govan to stay in the United Kingdom so that they can benefit from that proposal. <laughs> Because you see the problem, and I don't d doubt the personal commitment of the Deputy First Minister to the individuals within Govan Shipyard, but her problem is her prospectus for Scotland threatens them and her jobs, their jobs. If I were her, if I were her, faced with that consequence of her prospectus, I would change that prospectus rather than explaining away the concerns of those within the industry who are now highlighting these matters. The Deputy First Minister has spoken about diversification, but you need a base to work from in order to build to diversification, and it is the consequence while that was happening. But given that naval contracts could dry up within a few short years. What discussions has she had with BAE about diversifying work on the Clyde? Does she have a diversification plan ready to be put in place? And can she tell the workers in my constituency when she anticipates that work on the first non-naval contracts will begin? Deputy First Minister. With the greatest respect to Joanne Lamont, let me, let me say firstly, John Swinney raised the issue of diversification uh, with BAE Systems yesterday when he spoke to them. I, I recall a uh, joint meeting that John Swinney and I uh, had with the trade unions on the Clyde where diversification was one of the key issues that we discussed. We're not responsible for the running of the shipyards at the moment. The whole point I am making is that we need to build an alternative future for our shipyards. With naval procurement as a part, yes, but looking at what we do to boost exports, looking at what we do to diversify. And the point I am making that Joanne Lamont doesn't seem to be able to rebut in any way is that there are examples out there of other countries similar to Scotland that do this very well. So in the spirit of consensus, can I say to Joanne Lamont, we'd be delighted to work with her and anybody else across the chamber to start to look at that yeah. different future for our shipyards. Because I tell you this, and this is a point regardless of the outcome of next year's vote in a few years time even with the type 26 even with the type 26 we're seeing a downsizing of the shipbuilding industry and in a few years time we'll be asking ourselves what comes next because there's nothing in the mod locker after type 26 so this is a challenge for all of us whether scotland is independent or not if we want the future of our shipyard secured we have to work to find that away and on the point about defense jobs generally you know joanne lamont really should look at some of the figures and some of the evidence. Defence jobs are not being protected within the UK. We are seeing a disproportionate loss in defence jobs and facilities. Our shipbuilding industry is being downsized before our very eyes. That is the reality of the UK. The threat to defence jobs in Scotland is not independence, it is Westminster, and we are seeing that day and daily. If 
Swamond. If this were only a, an argument between the Deputy First Minister and I, that might be an acceptable answer. People are worried about their jobs and they deserve better than that. John Swinney and his party have been arguing for independence for 30 years. You think they might have spoken about diversification before yesterday. Before yesterday. Because even if you agree with their position, you know to move from one place to the other, you need a bridge to create that security. There is no diversification plan. It is simply a defence against the reality they are now facing. And it's not a reality just for us in this chamber, much more seriously for those who defend on these jobs. This morning I spoke to the shop stewards convener at Talis. He described this position they are now in after yesterday's announcement as moving from uncertainty to vulnerability. That vulnerability is because the United Kingdom government has made it clear that defence contracts will not be let outside the United Kingdom and therefore, and therefore will not come to Scotland. I think people within the defence industry would prefer to hear this rather than hearing catcalling from yeah. the back benches. So let me say it again. It's made it clear that defence contracts will not be let outside the United Kingdom and therefore will not come to Scotland if Scotland is outside the United Kingdom to which you all aspire. The reality is that the United Kingdom has not built a warship outside the United Kingdom since the Second World War. If the Deputy First Minister is so sure these contracts would go ahead regardless, can she guarantee the rest of the United Kingdom that an independent Scotland would place orders for warships with English yards? I think we know the answer. So, Order. so can she Order. explain? Never mind, never mind what she hopes she aspires to believe in. Can she explain to my constituents and hers who work on the Clyde what will happen to their jobs should there be a yes vote? Can I, First Minister? Can I, say, and I, can I say to start with, I take no pleasure whatsoever in the statement I'm about to make. But the result for other parts of the UK of the UK government's announcement yesterday is that there are no other shipyards in the UK where complex warships can be built. That's the result of the death knell that the UK government sounded for Portsmouth yesterday. The Clyde is not only now the best place to build these ships, it is the only place in the UK to build these ships. And on the point about defence contracts not being let outside the UK. Uh, can I be uh, the first, amazingly the first, to tell Joanne Lamont that UK defence contracts are already let outside of the UK? You know, it's not that long ago that the MOD let a contract for a military vessel to Korea. The MOD leases, leases military vessels from Norway. She didn't mention my Australian example earlier on. But you know what? It's not just Australia. Here's something from a newspaper in India in 2011. The cash-strapped UK government has approached New Delhi to jointly design and build the Type 26 frigates. The Deputy Defence Minister in the House of Commons in January 2011, talking specifically about the Type 26. We're in discussion with Canada, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand, Turkey. I'm going to quote all of these countries expressed interest in joining the UK in a collaborative programme that would bring together members of the Commonwealth while driving down costs for the Royal Navy. So is Joanne Lamont's point that it is only a future independent Scotland that the UK government wouldn't and couldn't collaborate with? But, you know, my last point is this. Joanne Lamont, I understand, doesn't support independence. I think I've got that message. <laughs> she will campaign hard against independence. I accept that. I even respect that. But this is a question about what happens after Scotland has democratically voted for independence. And surely she is not going to threaten and bully and seek to blackmail yeah. Scottish shipyards. Instead, surely she should be saying, in that scenario, the MOD should do the only thing, the right thing, the best thing. Here's what Jamie Webster, the convener of Govan Yard, somebody who knows more about the Clyde than the rest of us put together, here's what he said. What I will say publicly, if the situation is that Scottish people, by democratic vote, vote yes, 
I would expect no sorry demand that every single politician supports us. So my question to Joanne yeah. Lamont is simple. Will she support the Clyde to build the frigates even if we're independent? Yeah. Briefly, Ms Lamont. Order. Order. Briefly, Ms Lamont. I will always stand up for the constituents I represent. I will always stand up for the people of Scotland. The problem the Deputy First Minister has, once that vote is taken next year, we have no control or influence over what a UK government would do because we are not in it. She highlights all of these issues about how we can work with other people. They represent the current benefits of being in the United Kingdom, sharing risk, pooling resource, coming together in tough times and making sure not that we put government workers' jobs at risk, but make sure that we protect them in the future. Briefly, Deputy First Minister. The fact of the matter is, Joanne Lamont is not standing up for the Clyde. She's seeking to try and bully and blackmail yes. people. Yes. Ian Davidson is yes. arguing for the contracts to be taken away if Scotland becomes independent. That's yes. not standing up for the Clyde. Let me end, Presiding Officer, with referring her to the comment that her deputy leader, Anas Sarwar, made on television last night. He said this, and I quote, let's not make this a constitutional issue. Uh, that memo obviously didn't get uh, to Joanne Lamont. It sounds as if she's even more out of the loop in her own party than we thought. <laughs>